Hello everyone. Some uh, some people have asked quite often on my Patreon how to draw hair. I don't know how to draw hair. That said, I sometimes get results. So here's what I would do to draw hair. Um, let's not use this brush this time because people will think this is what you need. Let's just grab a regular everyday brush. So if like, you want to draw hair, there's a few things to keep in mind. Here's what I keep in mind from one of this one of the stuffs when I do this stuffs what it looks like so first you gotta draw a good head good head means good hair uh, what by good head I mean you have to have a proper volume unless you're going with stylistic so here's here's a head here's a head here's a crappy head a crappy, let me see if I can use this one right here sorry I just swapped my stylus out for another one so you're gonna want to do a few things or keep a few things in mind first get a good idea of the angle of the head I've drawn this before and I'll show this to you again uh, draw shapes that help you visualize the 3d-ness so that you're doing uh, doing yourself a favor when it comes down to finalizing. Don't blow time on it. Don't draw 3D shapes and everything. Like don't don't do this. This is a hair. In you know, don't draw wire mesh. That looks terrible. Don't draw wire mesh. Uh, but do like eyeball what's going on here. So in this case, let's say you want to draw this head uh, let me just muscle my way through a not so terrible jawline here let's just go anime straight up anime yeah it's much easier than drawing lips um you got this you got the jawline oh, sorry you got the jaw got the ear got the eye line all right and then you want to throw a bunch of hair First thing to do is to keep in mind that there's a lot more hair on the head than you think there'd be, but there's also way less hair than you think there'd be. Head us hair usually just comes out of the top, so let's do number one. The hair, and let's not even say it, hair goes on the top. Um, the majority, people bald, people, people lose hair. A lot of the hair just comes right out of the damn top of the head. That's not to say they don't come out of the side. But most of the time, it comes out of this hot zone. So keep that in mind. Because what's going to happen is, is you're going to want to use the fact that the hair comes out of the top of the head, which is a fucking... Oh, nice swearing, too. Hey, kids, leave the room. I'm swearing now. So you want to use the top of the head as a good way to guide where the hair should be swooping from. So let's say you have bangs on a character. You're going to want all your lines to generally come from the top of the head, not from the sides. You know, that'll help make bangs look well. <laughs> make, that'll help bangs look good. Yes, nice. Good English. Good morning. So you got to do that. You got to put the lines there. Um, same thing with this here. You want to, you know, obviously hair comes from the top of the head. Now, I don't particularly do this stuff here make the ribbons but it is helpful for people who are trying to get an idea of what to do uh, you can do this if you want I know for some people it's very helpful for other people they don't need it where you just break down the hair into little sheets um, I'll tell you when I do use it in a, in a few seconds here there's that and then you can do this uh, and then they just kind of break the hair into different sheets and make that work for them but I, it's a little complicated it doesn't always work out the only time I really do that is when I got a character looking up looking looking up at a character so here's a neck here's some facial features here's an ear all right so you got yourself a chin one of these angles that's nearly impossible to draw alright so you got all this stuff and it's all crammed up at the top 
and uh, you want to draw hair the problem is that most of the hair is obfuscated and it's coming down at the character so this is when you just you buckle up and you just draw sheets of paper and you can even add a little depth to it here um, and it's not that you really need to draw these like 3d shapes real quick like as much as you just need something to give you an idea of what you should be doing with your lines because without this you'd be tempted to kind of here I'll show you what you're gonna do without these lines you'll be tempted to do what you always do which is to draw the hair and bring it down draw the hair and bring it down and then but you're like oh it gets big so then you do it big but in truth because you're you've blocked away from walked away from trying to do a stylization and you just broken everything down into a shapes you now have the freedom to kind of conceptualize what it should look like in 3d space and then work on top of that uh, I'm gonna, you know to, to add some style and some shapes to what you're doing and then you can add an ear you know might not look um, I might not be doing it a service right now but trust me when I say you want to come at it from this angle especially when it, you got to draw you got to draw something at an extreme angle like this because it'll just really help you out in the long run so that's that's a little tip for hair draw it in 3d when you go into extreme angles and then it helps as well for shading you're like okay i know that this is going to be in the shade because of the 3d and etc etc that's not so important let's go back to what we're doing so there's that uh so hair comes from the top it leads in you know try to just i know it seems kind of silly and obvious but what will happen is people will draw bangs okay they'll be like bangs and then bangs will go like this and it makes no sense. The hair, you gotta make it come from the top of the head. Hair comes from like that. So there's that. Even also, as much as the, a character, if you got a head, right, and then there's long hair, the longer the hair, the heavier the weight. So you gotta, when you have long hair, you gotta consider that there'll be less flowiness. Although, I mean, if you're gonna draw crazy hair or stylistic stuff you don't have to worry that much but the longer the hair the flatter and closer it is to the skull so you know long long hair like this you're gonna just ba basically see and you can even go so far as to just follow every contour of the skull because technically the weight's too much and the, there's just no bounce to it uh, with short hair uh, a short hair person sorry just kind of losing my train of thought here I just thought about something cool and then with a short hair person you can you know you've seen this before you can do more bouncy stuff because there's less weight on the hair so it'll kind of blow out more here's another thing you can do to help you get better hair you can do the following so one of the things that i find really helpful is just draw this time overworking this just got to draw a circle and get a line down that's really it. the three pieces that line that line that line that line these are the shapes of a head so what you do is you grab some let's say you want to do some stylistic stuff and you're like okay you know i want to have it big and whatever and if you Often people will just kind of go da 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 and then kind of work off of that. I find it helps that you kind of draw a silhouette first and then kind of kind of construct inside that silhouette um, for for a few reasons. One, it'll if you've got a good shape to the silhouette, um, it'll carry over into the drawing. Two, I find that a good haircut tends to have a proper shape because the person cutting your hair is, is considering that when they're doing it so having all the hairs kind of evenly neat to some extent can be important so just keep that in mind I'm not really drawing anything particular I'm just kind of con con showing you conceptually what you can do 
with that. So I just double check to make sure the audio is playing. That's funny. Uh, so here you have, you know, you got long, long, long strokes. Uh, and here you can actually see I'm, I'm doing some stuff you should probably be thinking about is uh, lots of detail, no detail few details no detail few details lots of detail try to try to st stagger your details and, and the visual cues of your of your art you know if you're doing hair you don't want to be doing like every hair all right unless you know it can work if you're doing a really st watch me pull this off <laughs> uh you know you don't want to do every single hair here, even then I'm kind of using like artistic interpretation to not draw it all the way up but you know you can ruin this by just drawing everything and making it noisy you know this actually doesn't look too good but this actually looks fine to me because you've got a lot of noise and then a little noise so the eye has a moment to, to take a take a breather so try to try to have Moments of small detail, moments of no detail or large spaces. Same thing with these hair bits. You know, you got this. <coughs> Sorry, got something in my throat. It's your dick. Uh, it's gonna go like this, and then I'm not really describing this correctly here. I'm gonna go like this. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much obvious here, but here, this is another example. You've got, you can get yourself a lot of detail here, a lot of detail here. If you keep a lot of empty space at the top, if you kind of go in and do a detail everywhere, it gets really noisy. It's kind of not so good. Uh, another thing I try to do is avoid, I mean, depending on the style, let's say I draw a character and the hair, everything goes into a point. The problem with points is they're kind of ugly. Um, and how you form those paints points make a big difference so here you have like the point here you have a similar point here you have another point here you have a different kind of point you know this one leads into long these are all different ways to end hair and they all give a kind of different appearance uh, one I like is you just put a blunt end on it like this and it gives it a little more pudgy look. Um, another thing I've been doing recently I kind of like is when you do have a point, so let's go up to one of my drawings I drew, so I'm not going to draw this again. Maybe we can save one of these. So let's say I go like this and I've got another line here and I, and I kind of just don't like the point, it doesn't feel right. I find that if you kind of just draw a few strokes down across the tip it kind of looks like this here. You go like this. Kind of draw that. I've seen a few artists do this, and it kind of, kind of, I feel it. It softens what feels like just a weird blob. You know, you can just go like. Oh, that kind of looks stupid. Anyway, you get the idea. There's different ways to treat that, and uh, if you compare that to just this, it kind of looks. This kind of looks a little plain, but if you throw the lines on there, it kind of feels more hair-like. Kind of has like a feather appearance. Uh, another thing to keep in mind uh, with guy's hair. So let's say we got guy's hair. Let's go for the skull. This guy's got eyes. Okay, whatever. So what'll happen often is this, you know, if you go anime route, you're just gonna throw let's see you just throw hair everywhere and it doesn't seem fun but honestly when the more I've studied men's hair the more I realize men have hair in relatively few places you can easily look at a man who does have a full head of hair but high, just happens to have a high widow's peak uh, and they'll have something like this going they'll have like mostly like Sorry, I'm kind of not doing this right. Here, here you go. So, they'll... It's kind of like this shape. 
if I draw it with another color, you'll see it better. Like, you got all this skull, but really the hair only shows up in, like, these spots. You know? And even to the point where you can actually see the skull have no hair on the sides. Like, obviously, you know, that's really strong Widow's Peak. So here's an example of what that is. Uh, uh, shit, what's his name? The guy with the super small nose and the large lower upper lip. Uh, Bruce Willis has this problem. <laughs> problem. Bruce Willis has interesting features. One of them, I'm not actually going to draw a proper Bruce Willis, but I, I can tell you right away, Bruce Willis looks like that has the following features. He's got a tiny nose. He's got really long lip. It already kind of looks like Bruce Willis. All right, this is Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis. But also, over time, he's kind of like, his widow's peaks expanded due to age. So you'll see like, a near, a near like a sling back here. It's like he's still got all his hair, sorta. It's like balding, but it doesn't look bald. It's like balding in the most dignified way possible. Uh, it's maybe not this extreme, but you know, you want, until recently, Bruce Willis hasn't really shaved his hair. He does it now because I think it's just gone full blown. But he was holding on there with that widow's peak for quite a while. Uh, so keep that in mind, you know, like, you know, the, 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 the hot spots for hair are really these two zones. But really, it's the top, it hangs out at the top. And, uh,. Yeah, also keep an eye on what you're doing with the center core. So let's say, I uh, uh, keep drawing that shape. You got, you got this shape, right? I'm not gonna do that, blah, blah, blah. You got, I'm just gonna draw bad hair just to illustrate an idea. I don't really want to worry about too much about the, uh, the quality of this. So really there's two ways to approach, there are two ways. There are many ways to approach this, but here are two ways you may approach this. You got yourself your hair, all right? And then you draw that, you draw that, you draw that, you draw that. All right, here you have the kind of like silhouette hair. And this is actually pretty, can look pretty good, especially if you really hammer out the silhouette. It can look great, it can look finished, you know? And it's good to keep in mind that sometimes getting all these details into these hairs is not, does not make your drawing better. Um, so, but if you were to do it, keep in mind to balance once again where you're putting the visual information. Uh, and, and I don't really know how to do this instructionally. I kind of just feel it out. See, this already feels a little heavy. So, so one of the things you can do, and we've talked about this before, is you start feeling out these shapes in a 3D space so here I got that shape I know you guys are gonna be sick of hearing this and a lot of you might be like I don't want to draw 3d shapes I just want to have fun that's fine I'm just telling you how I feel it's come to be the most reliable way to do this all right so you got this you got this you know and now that I've kind of I'm not really caring about the structure I'm not really caring about how it feels as a stylistic illustration I'm just I just want the quickest interpretation of these shapes and how they actually function on the head so here I got a little bit of a problem I gotta work out how this sometimes you can just draw yourself a ball get yourself out of the jam with a shape ball shape okay so and it's not supposed to entirely be the most realistic conceptual but here's now what I've got I'm gonna blur this up using the blur tool you can guys can make yourself a blur tool by using the let me screenshot these settings for you, you can just oh actually might be some brushes oh actually no these are all base base here here's the here's the blender tool here's the bl 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 blur tool <laughs> there 
grab grab a load out of that all right you got it g -g good moving on back to what we we're doing blur that up all right and um uh and now actually i'm going to erase a little bit to kind of soften up these details just just a little bit so i can draw on top of it and get rid of some of that harsh detail and now you can kind of well, let's just actually go right up with the lumi shade and get some strong that's a little too strong let me shade let's get a stronger brush so i can really show the difference so here what i'm doing is instead of using kind of a stylistic mesh i had made initially and you guys had just seen me make that you know now i'm taking this 3d shape but not interpreting interpreting it uh, i'm going to use a softer brush so i can get actually a few details in here so stylistically, let's go back and just redo this. That's not feeling right. So I'm kind of using the 3D shapes I've built to uh, to best interpret this. So if you really want to go into the, these advanced, more aggressive methods, there are some tools to help you kind of get there. You know. So I'm using these shapes to kind of, the, the, the shapes I've drawn before to kind of use them as how to flow my, the hairs across it. So here, you know, I. I know I should probably, I should probably do this and not just go like this, not just go like this because I need to follow this shape. So I got this hair strand and here I know I should probably go like this and then tuck into here, you know. And uh, I'm kind of using my artistic know-how here to to make some decisions. If this will get me good results, I don't know. I'm kind of just winging it here, so maybe you'll like what you see. Maybe you'll think this is dumb, but I hope that I'm like kind of showing you. I'm more more interested in showing you guys a way of approaching something than like telling you, "Hey, I'm a great artist." Uh, I think I'm far from that. So, but, but I do have a way of trying to figure out how to solve problems, which is what I'm really trying to teach you guys here is problem solving less, less about the generic how to draw stuff. So here I'm having a little trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to being simple and that kind of solves my problems. Uh, because, and this is why, uh, too much detail on this back end was kind of conflicting with this front end. Uh, so I, I kind of knocked down the detail level a little bit. And this actually brings me down to another point, which is, uh, and this kind of applies a, all the time. The closer you get to the edge of something that's facing slowly away from you, like for instance, here you go, you got a leg, let's dissect it, here's the bone. Here's an eye looking at it, all right? The closer the, these edges point away from the eye, the more you can condense de detail. So let's say for instance, I mean, obviously just think about it. There's scales here, scales here. You know, if we draw scales on something, four, there's gonna be all this space but side facing, there's just a little slender amount here and here and here and here and here so that all the detail gets compressed into a small zone. So what, what that does means is when you're drawing, you need to kind of keep that in mind. It means 
means you can see how you can stack more lines on the edges and it kind of feels all right that's because you're kind of taking advantage of how that looks in real life which is when something comes to its edge there'll be a lot more details and thus there'll be a lot more details and thus you can you can cram more details in there uh, you know it doesn't always work perfectly but it's a good thing to keep in mind so in this case I've kind of gone overboard with that but if I keep things a lot simpler and I go you know this is kind of nice and noisy but I'd like to just reduce some of the noise you can just kind of focus on keeping the center nice and nice and not noisy and then stacking a little more noise on the edges here if you want to hatch a little bit now you know which way to hatch because you've got a bit of a general shape that you've broken down now when I hatch I can hatch in the direction of those shapes I built there's a bunch of different ways you can approach hatching but you know this is one way is to go down the the shape uh, and then accentuate it with that there's also just ignoring that completely and doing whatever you want but I hope that kind of gives you an idea so there, there's a con bunch of concepts on drawing hair and hopefully that helps some of you guys I uh I feel like the best way to really approach this, I, I mean, I was thinking about creating material, but I feel that if I just kind of go right into this and start talking about it and approach it in the way my mind's gonna approach it, I feel it's a lot more honest, a, a lot more honest approach than preparing all this material and you know having all these steps because that it's not really what happens when I start drawing hair. When I do do this, I feel like I come across some ideas on what I want to talk that I had in initially when we started and it's actually kind of cool because it means that you know my brain seems to kind of pick up and work on what I'm doing and, and wants to talk about this wants to talk about that and actually kind of, I feel it comes up with more points than it normally would if I were to follow a script so hopefully this kind of sets the tone sets a good pace I kind of don't like this hair but I hope it explains what I'm talking about maybe it's just because I like simpler hair or maybe because this hair just sucks you know whatever this is kind of just sucky hair but uh, I think as a silhouette it works better uh, maybe if I draw like a cute a cute eye it'll sell it yeah enjoy your animes so hopefully that kind of just breaks it all down in a in simple way. Maybe there's maybe some stuff I missed, but generally speaking, these are the kind of concepts I keep in mind. Uh, you know, with men's hair, I feel the, the less is more. Just go with straight. So uh, don't go into more details unless you have to. Yeah, here you go. Um, if you get into too many details, I find that it just makes the guy look more feminine. Of course, if you're trying to make a feminine guy, then go go right ahead, do that. Uh, but generally speaking, keep men's hair kind of quick and dirty, silhouette shapes, a few hatch lines, a few hatch lines, and uh, that's really enough. For most people and I think it just it works better it's the a man's hair isn't really entirely what what is the more important thing about their appearance unless they're a certain kind of guy so a lot of the time it's it's good to just kind of give that a bit of a breather and uh, hopefully that helps all of you guys and I'll see you next time bye bye